Um, in terms of this session, we will be sharing out the results from the uh, Collective Fund pilot. I'm sure I'm very excited. I've already seen it, but I'm still excited. <laughs> so I hope you're all excited. Um, we'll be reflecting on what we've achieved together this week. And last but not least, we'll be discussing some possible next steps. With that, I'm gonna hand over to Caitlin. Thanks, Emmy. We get more control access. Okay. Here we go. Let's see if that clicks on there. So the time has come to reveal the results of our co-budget exercise. Um, let's see if this works here. Dun, dun. Oh, Emmy, can we go to the um, visualization? One second. Uh, thanks to Bianca Kramer, one of our learning partners for the week, who helped pull together this visualization. I'm going to speak to this. Um, this shows you how the allocations move throughout um, throughout the week. We wanted to kind of share a few high level learnings as well as our kind of final top three that you can see uh, in the race for the buckets <laughs> in terms of um, the top bar being the critical and at risk infrastructure, the second being governance, the third being technical reliability and security, financial health, adoption, and then also preprints. Um, first off, we wanted to recognize that for an exercise where you all had power of the purse for 36 hours, um, that it was incredible to see so many people really dive into this exercise. Um, we saw, and you can still access um, through your co-budget login, um, we saw a variety of different interactions in terms of individuals that really started to, um, you know, utilize that comment, comment section to help further dig into further uh, additional discussion and also justify their uh, their decisions and others who took a different, maybe more um, kind of passive uh, means of making those allocations without necessarily sharing their thinking. Um, in terms of our final numbers, and I know that we had a few, uh, I think we captured most here, but the top three, uh, we saw um, criticality receive the most um, funding in terms of $30,014.50, um, surpass that, thir that 30,000 threshold that we put forward for the bucket. Um, we also saw governance come in at $21,132, with the, the third being technical reliability and security with $16,740. Um, we know that not all the funds have been allocated, uh, but these are the top three that we saw emerge as clear, um, clearly in the lead in comparison to the others. What also was interesting is to see the breakdown, and we'll be sharing a, a broader synthesis about this um, in, you know, in the weeks to come. Also the, broad, the, the breakdown in terms of how many individuals allocated to specific areas. Um, the top three, the critical and at-risk infrastructure, saw 22 individuals who pledged their funds. Community governance uh, saw 19 individuals backing that particular bucket. Reliability saw 17. Um, we'll also say that adoption and financial health saw almost an equal amount of um, committers in terms of 14 for adoption and 12 for financial health, those buckets themselves were very close behind technical reliability and security with also eight supporters for preprints. Um, we also saw a number of folks add funds more than once, some who went full in on one particular area, which is amazing to see, and others who uh, we saw add incremental amounts as they started to make their allocations. I wanted to just pull out a few uh, learnings, especially from those top three buckets that we saw in the comments here. Um, in terms of some of the rich discussion around critical and at-risk infrastructure, the question of are individuals funding that because they want to fund critical and at-risk infrastructure or critical or at-risk infrastructure and where people are seeing some of those differences. Um, also in terms of 
who gets to decide what infrastructures are eligible? Is that outsourced to an organization like IOI or is that an allocation by pledging funders or institutions or a different governance board? How is the money distributed across infrastructures? Um, to what extent would in institutions prefer to outsource those decisions? Um, also comments about the buyback of infrastructure feeling that that belonged in maybe a different um, focus area, a different bucket as well. Um, and then also the recognition that this feels like a high priority or we risk losing infrastructure that will take more time and money to rebuild and adopt. On the governance side, um, recognition about governance being you know, not only uh, important, but maybe necessary in terms of helping to not only ensure the health of a project, but possibly playing a really critical role in making the buyouts of particular infrastructure by commercial entities harder um, and recognition that it's frequently overlooked. Some questions also around the mechanism of where funding for specific community governance and building that out, how that can be allocated uh, in a way that helps advance that for specific projects. And then lastly, for technical reliability, um, recognition that in order for open tools to be adopted or relied upon, again, some of these other buckets, that they need to interoperate with adjacent systems, be trustworthy, sound um, and recognition about, um, which we heard come up in our conversations yesterday, that some of the architecture that is heavily relied on in the space is 20 to 30 years old. And so also noting the, the importance of the, the dedication of funds to ensuring that we're not only improving and um, keeping an eye on the technical components, but that we're also thinking about how that can be integrated across not only different tools, but into our workflows to drive adoption. So in terms of um, additional comments for that, and if you wanna go back to the main slides, um, we just wanted to thank you for spending your time and, and working on this uh, exercise with us. We'll be sharing more in the coming weeks about what those next steps look like. And again, um, would love your continued thoughts and feedback. With that, I will hand it over to my colleague, Richard. Richard, over to you. Awesome, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I am also going to take charge, control. Um, we're going to, so we've offered our reflections about this, but we're really interested in your reflections, both as participants in this process, you know, and, and now viewers of the results. Um, so we're, we're just gonna do this as a solo um, ideation exercise. We ask you to put your notes though into the Google Docs. Uh, so we won't be going into breakout rooms uh, right now. We'll be doing that in a moment. So um, just want to, we'll give three minutes, we'll have some music, um, and just want to ask you to go into the Google Doc um, and add notes in there around this idea. What was at least one thing that was surprising about the results? And one thing that you weren't surprised by for the results? And then share a question you have based on those results. Um, so if I could get the direct link into the chat for you all, right where we're going. You'll see there's three boxes there for you. I was surprised by, I wasn't surprised by, and then the, I wonder, based on these results, I wonder. And this is again, opportunity for us to capture some of your thoughts, feelings about this. We'll kind of go over them really quick and discuss them uh, before moving on to, to our, for our wrap up of this, so. We're gonna wrap up this portion of it. And first of all, again, I'm gonna echo the thanks for, for joining us in this process. Uh, encourage you to have the opportunities uh, later on to reflect on this co-budgeting process, what it was like and everything. But I just wanna make the pitch, if you did find this interesting, which I know some of you were really excited by this, um, co-budget has the opportunity to start for free. Um, there's a contact information for them if you want to find out more, join a workshop and, and use this tool. Um, I can say for our part, it's been great working with them and exploring this as an option um, for the work, for this work, and how we can be more collaborative in, in, in distributing the, the um, decision making around this type of exercise distrib distribution. I want to transition now into a reflection on, on this, on the Funders Summit. And this is going to be an opportunity for us to ask this question, what did we achieve here? What did we um, learn? What do we still have to learn? What's been identified? 
And I want to start us off just by sharing some of our thoughts on this. And then we're going to go into um, a kind of extended discussion, more interactive discussion. Um, starting off with, I just want to share some of our intention in going into this, why we did this. Um, we wanted to raise the alarm about the high number amount of money going into for-profits to further open. It's a challenge. I think the, the for-profit model and the open access model, it, it, just, it doesn't feel like there's a, a good synergy between those. And I think we see that in terms of how it's practiced. So, um, and again, maybe we're preaching to the choir in this case, but it's important to really articulate why that's a problem and highlight the growing dependence on monopolies and increased security privacy concerns, as we see with the way data is being used, monetized, in ways that aren't necessarily furthering the goals of, of open science um, and share the increased urgency and experimentation happening. We wanted to be able to highlight some key things that were going on that you may or may not have been aware of and put them into this context of what is the art of the possible, what's available for us. Um, and through this experience, develop a recognition that the existing models are insufficient on their own. This idea of a funder funding a, an infrastructure service um, on their own or with just a few other uh, players isn't necessarily sustainable in the long term um, for what we want to achieve. And we also wanted to develop a process for collectively funding open infrastructure services. Um, that was the whole point of the co-budgeting exercise was to bring people together to discuss how this might work, knowing there were a lot of challenges, a lot of things that um, we could perceive and there are things that we couldn't perceive would be challenges and we learned from those. So we really appreciate the feedback. And in that, I just want to share a few things that we've learned, and then I'm going to ask you to kind of share with us what you've learned in this process. Again, using our liberating structures uh, discussion method that, that we've been using. So we, I think it's clear experimentation new models are needed, but it's also important to acknowledge that the way the existing ways are still useful and important. So this isn't about necessarily doing away with those. It's about how can we fill the gaps that are created, that, that exist. Um, based on what's what's already existing? How can we fill in the need that isn't quite being met? Um, and past experiences influence how we approach different funding frames. Words have meaning. Uh, they have connotations, they have context, they have things in there. Um, we heard a lot about the word use of the word venture and how that kind of really triggers a lot of reactions and responses that we need to be very mindful of um, and how we describe and how we discuss this, this work. Um, and we need more actionable information. We've been working at IOI diligently for the past year. Some of you have been working, you know, leading research efforts that stretch many years, in, case, in some cases decades, on this problem and this challenge. So um, there's a lot of work that's being done, and there's still more that needs to be done to really give, gather ac actionable information, things we can make decisions on. Particularly in well, what are the available services right now? What are the funding levels that exist? and the resource gaps, what's really needed. As, as much as we, we think we know, there's still a lot more to gather on this. And there's also some definitional work, as we heard yesterday, um, around criticality at risk, having some tighter definitions, maybe not e explicit, but this tighter understanding and definitions for, for what these mean, so we can make action going forward. And it's also, it, one thing to it, it's really important, it's, it's hard to understand and discuss broad categories without specific examples. Uh, the challenge here is that there's, it's about ambiguity. And we heard people really concerned about the level of ambiguity when we started. Um, that was by design in the sense of, with ambiguity comes the opportunity for input and collaboration and working out a okay, co-creation towards something. But there is a level of ambiguity that becomes uh, uncomfortable and it actually inhibits action and participation. So there's calibrating ambiguity to where Things are broad and, and, and necessarily vague so that people can kind of put their imprint on it and give their contributions to it um, without constraining action. Like if this, we came at this and said, no, this is how the, the world works and it's kind of a fait accompli that like, okay, no, this is how, what we need to do. The action is obvious, then it would just be you all just kind of, okay, check you know, yes, no, or whatever. Um, we want this to be a collaborative process, but we also understand how the ambiguity can actually be a hindrance to that. And we look forward to addressing that going forward. So with that, um, I want to just remind you the sessions that we covered, and then we're going to give prompts. And I'm going to ask you to please, um, for those of you that don't want to participate in the group discussion sessions, that's fine. But we do have a session where we're going to ask you to kind of write down your thoughts. And we would encourage you to stay for that session at least, and for that portion of this at least, and share your thoughts with us. So just as a reminder, uh, what we covered, so Monday was our introduction. So the funding trends, the mapping trends and the catalog of open infrastructure services, basically highlighting, this is what we found. And this is why we think there's some things to, that we need to think about in terms of funding and the funding cycles. 
Uh, Tuesday was when we went into the funding models, like what was available. And we presented the idea of the venture philanthropy and kind of made the case for that. Uh, heard your thoughts on that. We also did our demonstration of the collective fund pilot. Wednesday was our fun deep dive session, you know, talking more about the funding framework and, and how we we're thinking about this in terms of the, the funding areas. And then also went into preprints and community governance and the financial health, you know, displaying, excuse me, the work that we've been doing here at IOI. And then Thursday, another day of deep dives, this more on the, the more the fringes of our work and really engaging outside uh, experts in this work. Um, and our last deep dive, which was a, a fun adoption kind of, you know, participatory session where we really heard from you as experts contributing to this, uh, this important topic, as well as our hands-on discussions. So these are the sessions that we had, just imagine, just reminding you of the journey that you've been on this past week. With that being said, what we'd like to do is to take a moment of uh, reflection on what you learned and experienced over the past week. What of these sessions are really sticking out for you? The, the key moments, the key conversations, whether it was in chat, whether it was a panelist, um, whatever it was, or, or something you had a, in sidebar with someone else. Um, what are the key moments that sticks in your mind from these sessions? What have you learned? What may have changed about your perspective on these issues? And what additional questions need to be answered to move this work forward? So hopefully our little exercise there on participatory budgeting, kind of reflecting on that and feel free to kind of peruse that, go through it as you would like, uh, can be a way for you to, to think about this. So in terms of our wrap up, and I can't believe we are already at the last day of this event, um, just going back to our slide from the first day to, to recap a little bit about the journey that we've had together. Um, you know, over the course of this week, you've gotten the chance to not only get a first look at and, um, you know, a front seat for the research that the team has been conducting over the past year and a half, um, but also in terms of having these broader discussions around efforts to increase the visibility and the need to increase the visibility of open infrastructure services, not only in terms of their funding and sustainability, but also how adoption uh, really ties in, in an intrinsic way into that, um, as well as information to help further de-bias the discussions here. And I know we've talked about a number of different dimensions um, and even through this conversation about focusing on say the functionality that we're looking to enable rather than specific projects and, and where people sit alongside that. We've also shared not only our research, but we've heard from a number of experts in the space and others with specific perspectives on um, various areas that touch the, the buckets that we've talked about in our funding framework in, in terms of advocating for investment to further a healthier, more diverse and robust ecosystem and really what's needed to help further the aim of making open infrastructure the default in research and scholarship. That's included research on costs, externalities, um, the work that we've done around transformative influences, many, as well as many other organizations around how to assess projects, whether it's the principles of open scholarly infrastructure, the forest framework, um, other frameworks that we are continually inspired on from um, the social justice and reform space, um, as well as deep conversations around criticality of infrastructure, what that means in certain contexts. And we know we are only scratching the surface in terms of the various interpretations of what critical or at-risk means for specific communities that might not be represented here today. And then lastly, we not only shared our investigations around um, funding mechanisms, drawing intentionally from the finance and social investment space and ways in which to turn models that may not necessarily be ones that we always agree with, but models that also can help address, for example, longer timelines for, for funding beyond the two to three years or three to five years that we often uh, see infrastructure projects faced with when it comes to grant cycles or membership-based um, membership based programs to think about what that looks like in terms of sustaining over a longer time frame and rethinking what it means to have returns so that we are reinvesting these funds into these community needs. Other ways as well to not only pilot 
the sort of participation that we saw through co-budget and recognizing that part of that process, when you look at participatory budgeting experiences on you know, citywide levels where, you know, there's many cities around the world that have been experimenting with this, also struggling with many of the same questions around who's interpreting, who gets to make the decision, how are those funds going to be ultimately allocated, and really starting on that, um, on those next steps together to think about what are action plans to bring this forward, what do we want to carry forward in terms of the learnings here, in terms of transparency, and opening up those funding decisions beyond the conventional funders or program officer tiers. Let's see if I can move the slide forward. Da -da. Let's see. There we go. Oh, nope. I just went there we go. Thank you. <laughs> in terms of uh, in terms of additional next steps, we've got time later today for more informal conversation around that. But we also wanted to flag um, in terms of ways in which IOI is looking to help further this. Um, you know, we work in a number of different specific areas to help further the conversations that we've had today um, in terms of helping to catalyze change in the funding of open infrastructure. And you've heard from our research team and my colleagues about ways in which we're working on that by working hand in hand with funders and budget holders to think about funding models that may help keep core infrastructure not only governed in a way that lends to additional resilience and transparency and accountability, but also in terms of funding mechanisms that might allow for that to ensure different safeguards in terms of keeping infrastructure you know, in the community-led, community-stewarded space, as well as information around trends around costs, around um, different funding practices that might be able to, again, help to influence how these dollars are allocated. And we're really interested in finding additional ways to do that work with you all. We also support open infrastructure providers to help add capacity to the strategic planning efforts, business planning efforts, efforts to help improve and examine their governance, as well as building more robust funding runways um, in line with our research efforts and our mission and strategic plan. Um, we see this as a really critical way to not only help support infrastructure projects that are so critical to this work, uh, but also to help further a healthier, more robust open ecosystem, again, um, based on the research and engagement efforts that are really core and that many of you have been invited in and have helped us shape over the past two years for IOI. And lastly, we invite you all to help uh, join us in increasing investment in open infrastructure by contributing to the fund and also working to help further this shared agenda for investing in open infrastructure. Our efforts will continue along those lines in terms of not only working with, uh, with kind of mission aligned partners that are aiming to help build out additional transparency around funding needs, around examining um, you know, where there can be more efficient grant making, um, but also in terms of where um, you know, for additional organizations that are also working to help achieve some of these aims around open infrastructures, broader sustainability and adoption about where we can coordinate those efforts and work together rather than duplicate. So with that, you can go to the next slide. I think I mean my clicker might be a little a little broken. Um, in terms of what's happening next, we do have one final session. So if you really want to keep this conversation going, there's an invitation to do so um, in one and a half hours at 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Um, we will be having an informal open discussion following Tuesday's dialogue on funding models and Wednesday's dialogue on funding frameworks. Um, joined with our research affiliate Samala, who for those those who were unable to join for Samala's presentation um, not only comes from the uh, mission nonprofit space, but also has been working to really turn venture capital and other funding models on their head to help support communities on a really substantive level, and has been looking at different funding mechanisms across philanthropic organizations, social and impact investing spaces, and more to see where we can draw from those models inspiration to help um, think through different interventions for the space. 
Um, this will be an informal conversation. If you want to bring your questions uh, or recommendations or continue to dig into some of these really rich research areas, please feel please come and join us and um, an encouragement to bring your, your drink or nourishment of choice. Um, if we were all together at a conference, this would be our version of having, you know, everyone kind of spill out to the to the bar afterwards to continue the dialogue. Next slide, please. And last but certainly not least, our really sincere thanks, not only to you all for joining us over the course of this week, but I want to give special thanks to our interpreters, uh, Maria Delfina Cernello de Herbert, um, Ana de Choc Aceo, I'm going to mispronounce, I'm trying my best, Etienne um, Van Dam, and Camila um, Oyen Sarondo, who have been providing for our core sessions uh, and also keeping up with our conversations on this. Um, providing a translation in Spanish and French so that we can help make this event more inclusive um, to our participants around the world. We also want to thank our facilitators and learning partners, um, especially Bianca Kramer and Catherine Skinner, um, who have been joining us. Thank you for those who have to jump, um, as well as our partners from Greater Than who um, oversee the co-budget platform, um, who've been helping to facilitate those exercises, Elena Denaro and Tomomi Sasaki. We also want to thank, who are not here with us today, our event designers, Sarah Ramos and Carla Brites Santos, who are learning designers who helped pull together the flow for this, as well as a special thanks from the IOI team to Emmy and Naomi, our colleagues who really um, put, you know, all of their efforts into making this an experience for us all to go through together. So with that, I think we are good to close. Um, please keep in touch. We'll be in contact with additional follow-ons from the event. Um, please feel free to keep um, engaging in the Funder Summit Slack or in our general channels. And we'll be um, following up with additional opportunities to engage with uh, you know, not only this really important topic area, but also to continue the dialogue. Um, our thanks again for, for being with us this week and we hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. This is where we wait. Thanks. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.